Hello, this is Reza from Radicad, and in this second part of segmentation, I'm going to talk about a DAX dynamic segmentation solution for when you want to get the count of customers based on the count of orders that they have done, uh, an aggregation calculation uh, using a DAX uh, dynamically. Let's see how it works. Um, in my other video, I explained what is the segmentation problem. Now, just a recap of that. Uh, let's say I have a table like this, which is uh, all the sales transaction. It has the customer key and many other fields. It also has sales order number and sales order line number. Now, let's say I want to find out uh, the count of orders for each customer first. Then I, um, so it would be like a group by, by the customer. And then using the result of that, I want to have uh, that result to be visualized like this. Uh, as an axis, I have uh, each group. This is like those customers who have purchased only one, those customers who purchased two times, three times, four times, and the count of customers in each group, which then this can filter uh, a detailed table. In previous method, I explained that you can create an aggregated table on top of the fact internet sales table, and that aggregated table can be created using DAX calculated table, or using summarize function, or it can be created using Power Query. Uh, in both of those methods, this is a pre-calculated solution. Uh, which works perfectly fine, but the problem is that if I have a date slicer like this and I want the user to go and change the slicer and based on that the slicer selection, the segmentation changes dynamically, that method doesn't work. Uh, in order to get the user selection into the account for doing the segmentation, you need to do your segmentation dynamically rather than statically. And the dynamic segmentation can be done using a measure. Usually in Power BI, when you want something to be dynamically calculated based on the selection of a user, measure is something that you need to consider because measure calculation happens on the fly. It is not pre-calculated versus calculated column and calculated tables are pre-calculated and Power Query also pre-calculated. Now, if I want to do that, uh, let's go through the steps how this works. First, you need to have a field that has these segments in it. You cannot use a measure as an axis here, so you need to create a field, you need to create a table. Um, using the what if parameters, you can do that. You can go and create a new what if parameter. Uh, you can call this as segment. And uh, and then you can have like a minimum of one, maximum of eight or whatever you want, increment one at a time and default to be one. You don't want this as a slicer because we are not using this as a slicer, we are using it as an axis of a chart. As soon as you click on OK, this will create a table like this. So this is my segment table. I also created a video uh, about what if parameter and what they are, you can go and check that out. This creates a table like this. So segments table is a very simple table like that. One to eight, increment one at a time. It created using generate series. Now uh, I'm also getting this measure beside that. And the measure is called segment value, which is the selected value of that segment. And what it does, it gives me the selected value of that field. Now I can use that field is an, in an axis, as you can see here. Uh, the main part of this solution, however, is to write a measure and that measure to calculate this segmentation dynamically. So what I've done, I've created the measure, a DAX measure here. I just make it slightly bigger. Uh, this DAX measure is using a variable to calculate that table on the fly. The reason I'm not using calculate a table is that I want the calculation to be dynamically. So I have a variable using the summarize, similar to the previous approach, using the summarize uh, of that fact table grouped by customer key and then aggregation on top of that, which gives me the count of orders. Now from this table, 
I get the count of rows filtered when the count of orders, this how many orders is the count of orders, is equal to segment value. And for each of these values, the segment value is different. Like for example, give me the result of that when segment value is one or when segment value is two or three. This line in particular creates kind of the virtual relationship between the segment table and the table that, uh, um, that we have here, uh, the virtual uh, calculation that we have here. So as a result, this will give me count of, count of orders, um, count of customers who have that many orders. Now you want also this table to be filtered by that table. So for that, what I have done is I have created customer key, order quantity, sales amount, but I've created a new measure uh, all of these codes and uh, file can be downloaded through my blog link down in the description below. So feel free to go and download it at the bottom of that blog article. Uh, now here I have a measure and this measure is basically just a simple if statement. And the reason that I use that is that I'm also bringing the logic of the selected segment through that. Because now when I select segment five, this checks if the segment five is returning a value, this returns a value. And I use that as a visual in this, uh, in this, as a filter, sorry, as a filter in this visual. And I say return something when this is not blank. So as a result, when I select something here, this will only show me uh, those selected segments result, right? As you can see, this is filtering that. So, so far I have created this dynamic segmentation and it is filtering. Now, the good thing about this dynamic segmentation is that if I add a filter like this, a date filter, because everything is calculated dynamically, as soon as I change the range, all of these calculations happens again and the segmentation, everything like that would happen dynamically. Um, this is what you won't get with pre-calculation. This is what you get with DAX calculations and measures. Now there is a caveat for this. If you are using this, you need to be aware of um, the performance. Um, right now this is performing fast, but depends on the size of data, depends on how you use it, you might get different result. Uh, right now uh, this is fine but because this calculation every time happens again and again because it is on the fly calculation you need to consider that this would be slower than static segmentation so uh, i would recommend using a static segmentation only use this method if it is a must to do in that case then um, then dynamic segmentation is an approach to go. Uh, you can download this file down in the description below through my blog post. And uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI.